heads of state are meeting in London tonight to mark the 70th anniversary of the military alliance NATO. The Queen is hosting celebrations here at Buckingham Palace, but conversation over the canapes may be somewhat awkward. Donald Trump has so far managed to have a spat with the French president, to slip in that Boris Johnson would do a good job if he wins the election, and to deny that the US has any interest in the NHS, even if it was on a silver platter in post-Brexit trade talks. In the last hour, delegates have been greeted by the Prime Minister, Prince Charles, and the Duchess of Cornwall inside Buckingham Palace just behind me. Our political editor, Gary Gibbon, has more. The moment Boris Johnson's team dreaded. The man, the motorcade, the mouth. What might he say and could he play into Labour's election campaign? Today, Donald Trump has arrived in Britain. I saw it because his convoy went past my house last night. <laughs> so, I, so, so I know he's here. Our NHS will not be put up for sale to anybody. Jeremy Corbyn said he'd deliver that message in person to the president this evening at a Buckingham Palace reception. The president spent the day in meetings in London, but Boris Johnson was campaigning in Salisbury. He'd turned down the opportunity for a one-on-one -on -one chat with Donald Trump, worried it could harm him with voters here. Prime Minister, you're not meeting Donald Trump for a private talk this week, and you're the host of NATO, so what's that about? Well, actually, I'm meeting not only the President of the United States, I'm meeting every one of the NATO leaders, as you'd expect. You're meeting Angela Merkel, President Macron, and Pres President er Erdogan today for a private meeting, and you're not doing the same with Donald Trump. Well, Is he an embarrassment? No, on the contrary, and uh, we're, we have good relations with... I have good relations with Washington... At one of those bilaterals Boris Johnson dodged, Donald Trump met the NATO Secretary General and promised to keep out of the UK election. I'll stay out of the election. Uh, you know that I was a fan of Brexit, but uh, I stay out of it. Uh, I think Boris is very capable and I think he'll do a good job. An endorsement he didn't really want, but was safely out of the room. You couldn't hear. Should the National Health Service be on the table in trade talks? No, not at all. I have nothing to do with it. Never even thought about it. We have absolutely nothing to do with it. And we wouldn't want to. If you handed it to us on a silver platter, we want nothing to do with it. He said he had no idea where it all came from. But this was President Trump speaking here in June. Look, I think everything with the trade deal is on the table. When, you, when you're dealing in trade, everything's on the table. So NHS or anything else, or a lot, a lot more than that. But everything will be on the table, absolutely. Donald Trump himself said everything is on the table, including our National Health Service. Jeremy Corbyn was on daytime TV, making the most of what his team sees as a propaganda gift. He's in the Alpine Lodge. Very comfortable in our Alpine Lodge, by the fire there. Back at the US ambassador's residence, the president seemed to be suffering another memory loss. Mr. President, do you have a comment on Prince Andrew stepping down from the Royal League? No, I, I don't know Prince Andrew, uh, but it's, uh, it's a tough story. It's a very tough story. I don't know him. No. In fact, he's seen him quite a few times over the years. Most recently, this summer. He's even boasted about playing a round of golf with Prince Andrew. Turkey's President Erdogan was amongst the NATO leaders holding talks at number 10. Turkey's closeness to Russia, one of many tensions at this NATO summit. President Trump taunted President Macron. Would he take back ISIS fighters originally from France, who US troops were now guarding in Syria? They're mostly from Europe, and some of the countries are agreeing. I have not spoken to the president about that. Uh, would you like some nice ISIS fighters? Yes. Yeah. You, you, you can take everyone you want. <laughs> Let's be serious. Uh, the very large number of fighters you have on the ground are ISIS fighters coming from Syria, from Iraq, and the region. Your number one problem are not the foreign fighters. This is the ISIS fighters in the region. And you have more and more of these fighters due to the situation today. This is why he's a great politician, because that was one of the greatest non-answers I've ever heard. <laughs> and that's OK. As they readied Buckingham Palace for the NATO reception, President Trump was taking on another NATO ally. Was Canada coughing up the 2% of GDP on defence spending that NATO sets as a guideline? We'll put Canada on a payment plan, right? I'm sure the Prime Minister would love that. What are you at? What, what is your number? Uh, the number we talk about is 70% increase uh, over these uh, past years. OK. Where are you now uh, in terms of your number? We're at 135? 1.3. 1.3. 1. 1. 
One fourth. One fourth. And, and continuing to move They're forward. They're getting there. The US president's convoy making its way to Buckingham Palace this evening. All leaders were greeted by palace staff at the door. But this US Secret Serviceman suggested he should take over for the president's armor-plated limo. It's NATO's 70th anniversary gathering, but there's no air of celebration. President Macron described NATO last month as brain dead. President Trump today dismissed that as insulting, but he himself has called NATO obsolete. Gary Gibbon reporting there. Well, in about 20 minutes from now, you can expect a traffic jam of motorcades somewhere at the end of Downing Street as almost 30 NATO leaders converge on Downing Street for dinner with Boris Johnson. All very festive, frankly. We're also going to have a choir here, by the way. Now, before we came on air, I spoke to the Shadow Foreign Secretary, Emily Thornbury, and I began by asking her whether Labour are rather disappointed that Donald Trump hasn't backed up Jeremy Corbyn's claim that the NHS is for sale. Yes, well, he has a, uh, a somewhat um, loose relationship with the truth, doesn't he? Um, and he you may be. He's lying about that. I'm just saying that he may have been told some lines to uh, to speak, and uh, and it may even be that he's uh, agreed them with with, uh, with Boris Johnson as well. But frankly, nobody believes either of them. Listen, he says but you I don't even know. He says I don't even know how it came up. The reason it came up was because last time he was here, he said that the NHS was on the table. Mm. And now he says he doesn't want it on a silver platter. But you were hoping that Donald Trump, by putting his foot in it somewhere, would save your election campaign, you know, a week and a half before the election. He's not doing that for you, is he? Well, I don't agree with the premise of the question. We don't need Donald Trump to save us, thank you very much. You know, what we need is to be able to, to convince people on the doors that they should give us the opportunity to serve and transform our country. I, Donald Trump has how much longer in, the, in this country? I mean, he's got long enough, frankly, and he's got his Twitter. You're hoping that he'll say something. I, mean, I, I have no idea how long he's going to be able to maintain any discipline, mm. any discipline. Mm. But the bottom and top of it is this, is that, of course, pharmaceutical companies are interested in the data in relation to 60 million patients that we have on the National Health Service. Mm. Of course, they're interested in that. Of course, they're interested in, the, in how much pharmaceuticals can be sold to the NHS. Of course, they're interested in that. We've seen and it in the paperwork. And now we know it's off the table. And now we know that Donald Trump has been told that he has to say it's off the table. But there's some question about that documentary evidence, isn't there? Well, what questions are the there? The questions are that it might have been, you know, there, there's, on the Reddit red website, which is where this document has come from, there are questions around the veracity of that information. Has it been planted by someone? If from the outside? government, if, I mean, it's very interesting, isn't it? You know, they've had a good few days now since we have produced these documents, which seem to have been circulating around the internet. And then finally, three or four days later, you know, at last, the government possibly may be saying that they're not true. Let's see. Let them come out and say that what's in those documents is not true and that they didn't have those discussions. Let's talk about NATO. That, I mean, that's, that's why we're here to some extent. That's why Donald Trump is here. Now, um, Jeremy Corbyn on the Jeremy Vine show today said it was tit for tat for the Warsaw Pact and it deepened the Cold War. I mean, whatever you say about Donald Trump, he's more in favour of NATO than your party leader is. But Jeremy was talking about, the, about NATO in the past. What we need to talk about is NATO's future. And what we said in the 2017 manifesto and in the 2019 manifesto is that we are committed to NATO. Now, listen to me, changes. There are all kinds of things that NATO could be doing. They could strengthen itself by modernising. For example, you know, but one of the biggest about, threats... About NATO in the past, I mean, yeah. this is important, isn't it? This is about history. Deepening of the Cold War. It is the existence of NATO that, to a large extent, allowed the Cold War to be won by the West without a single shot being fired. What's important is ensuring that our, we keep our country safe now. What's important is what Labour would do to make sure that we keep our country Jeremy safe. Has Jeremy Corbyn got his history correct or not on this one? Jeremy Corbyn is correct to support NATO. That is what's in our manifesto, and it was in our last manifesto. And you, at the moment, according to the polls, you're not going to be winning it. Now, why is that? At the moment, the country is holding its breath and we're waiting for the people to decide. They're the ones who are going to decide. It doesn't matter about opinion polls. If you remember, just from two years ago, how far behind we were supposed to be in the opinion polls, and then what? look what yeah, happened Yeah, you did better than night. expected, but you still Much lost the election. You still lost the, the election. And, and, and the hunger that I see amongst our activists, who, who, who rightly believe that we did as well as we did, we, we got, into, we got a more of an increase in the Labour vote than we had done since 1945. Yes, we didn't 
didn't win and we need another push and in the next week or so we shall see what happens because we are still out on doorsteps we are still out there winning hearts and minds and we are telling people there's another way than this we do not need to have this shambles you put your trust in labor emily thornberry thanks very much well, I'm joined here at Buckingham Palace by the Conservative Chairman in the last Parliament of the Foreign Affairs Committee, Tom Tugendhat. You can hear from the protesters, you know, how people view Donald Trump's, or some people view Donald Trump's arrival here in London. So that endorsement of Boris Johnson as a, you know, excellent leader would be do a very good job after the after the election. That's in the way the last thing your party needs, isn't it? Well, even a stop clock tells the right time twice a day. So you know, it's not surprising that uh, people get that right. Uh, because he will do a good job, so that's uh, that's hardly a surprising thing yeah, to say. Did you need an endorsement from someone who is seen by some within your own party as pretty toxic? Look, Nick Griffin endorsed Jeremy Corbyn. I think we've all got people who we don't want to endorse us. That's that's <laughs> not, just not part sure of life, in quite I'm the afraid. same way. Um, but I mean, he said he'd stay out of the election. He played along with Downing Street's script. But his intervention on the NHS was that helpful? Do you think? Well, I think what's helpful is that he and now everybody else has made it clear that there is absolutely no question of the NHS being for sale. Everybody knows that the NHS has been under conservative management, as it were, for more than half its life. And that's where the investment, the real investment, is coming from. I mean, your own focus group yesterday showed that people don't trust uh, pie in the sky promises. They do trust real figures and real pledges. But he might have made that clear today, but just six months ago he said everything is on the table, so NHS or anything else. Do you believe that Donald Trump or the Donald Trump today? Well, the or person, neither? The people I believe are the British people who are never going to allow their NHS to be sold. So I don't think it matters terribly what an American president says. I trust the British people to select representatives who will carry out their instructions. Their instructions are completely clear. Very interesting you say you trust the British people. Do you trust the Prime Minister yes. who's insisted that yes. the NHS because is Because he will be sale? elected by the British people. He will be a representative of the British people. Let's look at the global picture, because that's what originally this meeting was about. Um, given this Macron-Trump spat, does that, do you think, show where the real power in this alliance lies? I, I think what it shows is that there is a real challenge for the international community in setting uh, the future world order. And I think this is a real opportunity for the United Kingdom. Look, when Boris Johnson achieves a majority in Parliament and has actually left the European Union, there's a huge opportunity for him to do what the world is crying out for, which is to look again at the international order and to actually go around talking to world leaders, France, the United States, are two very obvious examples, but there are many others around the world, and talk about resetting a global agenda that has really, frankly, lost its way. If you look at the struggles that the UN is having, or NATO, or indeed the European Union, all of these organisations are struggling because actually the change in China, the change in India, whether you see it as positive or negative, is really resetting the world to a new world order. But what's Britain's role in that? Because, I mean, you looked at the sort of power dynamic of Macron and Trump, you know, this spat has sort of transfixed people here today. Where, does, where is Britain in all of that? Where is Boris Johnson? Well, there's a traditional attitude that people talk, as you rightly just did, about power, and that is the old way of looking at it. And I would look at it differently. I would say, look, we used to have an empire of power. That's what shaped the UK for 200 years. We're now looking at an empire of the mind. That mind, what I mean by that is the intellectual underpinning of the global economy, the rule of law, accountancy. Some of the significantly less sexy things in life are actually underpinned by British standards and British ideas and concepts, whether it's contract law or or indeed accountancy. But given what NATO was set up to do, is it now fit for purpose in this new world? Well, I think it certainly is. I mean, uh, the old line, of course, is to keep the, uh, the, the, the Russians out, the Americans in and the Germans down. And, and certainly that's exactly what it's achieved extremely successfully for the best part of 70 years. And actually, look, there are challenges. Let's not kid ourselves. There are challenges about the funding of NATO. But the reality is that NATO is facing a, a Russian threat very effectively, not just in a military sense, but if you look at the cyber centre in Estonia, if you look at the way that NATO has reacted to, for example, the Skripal uh, attack, you see an alliance that is not only ready but actually fit for the 21st century, but certainly needs some updating too.